Dr. Lucia Mirovska Kopetz is an effective leader in 38 years of experience and education. After graduating from the University of Wrocław, Poland, she taught German at the Youth Culture Club at the Sport Academy in Wrocław. Since 1992, she was employed at the Chicago Public Elementary and High Schools. She's performed in several leadership positions, utilizing expertise and interpersonal skills, along with current research to empower and motivate students, parents, and teachers to build a community of learners. During her tenure at Chicago Public Schools and prior, Dr. Mirozva Kopetz was able to develop leadership skills through education and practice. She has an MA in German philosophy from the University of Wrocław, a mass, an MA in urban teaching at Columbia College in Chicago, an MA at Northeastern Illinois University in educational leadership, and a Doctor of Education from the Nova Southeastern University. Lucia Mirovska Kopetz has been a presenter at many conferences and workshops, both professional and social capacities. She's a co-author of a prominent book, Business Inspirations of Polish Women in the World. Outside of her professional responsibilities, she has been involved in many Polish organizations where she serves in leadership positions, as well as routinely volunteers. She's involved in the Alliance of Polish Clubs, the May 3rd Constitution Day Parade Committee, the Council of Educators in Polonia, the Legion of Young Polish Women, Ella Flag Young, Delta Kappa Gamma Society International, and many more. Since 2016, she serves on the St. Francis Borgia Parish Council and also as a lector. She's involved in the Renew My Church Archdiocese Council and Vicarate for Ministry Commission. She acts as the president of the St. John Paul II Polonia Scholarship Committee of the Catholic League, which awards each year $5,000 scholarships to the youth of Polonia. Dr. Mirowska Kopetz retired in September of 2018. Currently, she is serving as the administrator in charge and a member of the class size panel for Chicago Public Schools. She holds the position of the president of the Alliance of Polish Clubs in the USA, the chair of the May 3rd Constitution Day Parade Committee in Chicago, the largest Polish parade outside of Poland. And besides her professional and organizational involvement, she devotes time with two wonderful grandkids and her family. Doctor, thank you very much for joining us today and congratulations on receiving this award. Uh, State Treasurer, I'm, um, I'm surprised. I'm very touched and very humbled to accept this award. It, it's, it's such a recognition I never expected. Well, you have done an awful lot throughout your life, um, but your main focus has been on education. So when you were a young person, what inspired you to choose a career in education? Um, actually, it's quite interesting what led me to becoming an educator. When I was a little girl, I never played princesses. I was playing with my dolls, my teddy bears, stuffed animals. I was sitting them in rows and teaching them for hours, which, of course, later I never thought anything of it. Uh, during my college years, I was tutoring uh, high school students and adults, teaching them German language. I was watching uh, them being successful in their studies, and it was very fulfilling. Even though I graduated from the university with a master's in German philology and minor in teaching, I still didn't consider my, myself going into education. Actually, after I graduated, I was planning to take a break to raise my daughter. But after two months of maternity leave, I was home so bored that I started looking for a job. And surprisingly to myself, it led me into teaching. Uh, instantly, I fell in, I fell in love with the profession uh, and teaching and education was what I did for 38 years. And even being retired, I'm still engaged in education. Uh, some time ago, I also uh, concluded that I probably inherited teaching. Uh, even though my father was an engineer, part-time he was teaching in a trade school, and he let me collect correct papers of his students, which I love doing so much and giving them good grades, probably better grades than my father would. Uh, also, his mother, who uh, was my grandmother, was a full-time teacher, and her, her father 
was my great great grandfather who was a university professor so i strongly believe that teaching i was sentenced to become an educator well it sounds like teaching is in your blood uh you have done a, a great have had a great career here now our hope is that people uh learn something about you here but also we want to inspire a young generation of people to get involved in education so what advice would you give a young person who is thinking about pursuing a career in education? I think I would say what I was always telling my daughter, uh, which was, you should follow your dreams. Uh, you should do what you love, what satisfied you. It is extremely important that you go to work every day with pleasure. Uh, that you enjoy doing what you do. You spend almost 50% of your day at work, therefore your, your work, your job should satisfy you and made you happy. Um, at no means you should fulfill somebody else's dreams because we often see how parents push, push their children into specific um, jobs. The love and satisfaction of work, of your work would always equalize any difficulty you would encounter at work. And we both know that they're often happen. Uh, if there is anything you would imagine to love and love to do, you should be persistent, patient, and educate yourself to be the best you can be, both professionally and in your personal life. You should set your goals and consequently do all you can to reach those goals. Don't let anybody push you out of your chosen path or discourage you to follow your dreams. Always set high goals for yourself and work toward those goals. Never accept mediocrity. Um, I'm very happy to say that I always loved what I was doing and cannot imagine doing anything else. That's great advice for career and education. That's a great advice for any career out there. Now, we talked a lot about your experience in education, but I also, in my remarks, point out that you've done an awful lot outside of the classroom. So you, a common theme is service to your community. What motivates you to serve your community in your spare time? Um, I probably have volunteering in my blood. My earliest community service was through Polish scouting back in Poland, Harcerstwo, back in elementary school and in high school. I was also involved a lot in my church. When I came to the United States, I first got involved in many educational organizations and later with the Alliance of Polish Clubs and of course with the May 3rd Constitution Day Parade Committee. I love people. I love helping others. I wouldn't be able to just sit at home and do nothing. I must be busy and constantly in action. Some people retire and slow down, down their lives. I wouldn't be able to go that route. I have many ideas and still want to make them reality. So it is clear that you have a passion and love for people. Uh, and it's clear you don't like to sit around. But one question I've been asking a, a lot of people here is, uh, for those of us who, who like being out amongst people, the pandemic was really difficult. So what challenges and struggles have you faced during the pandemic? Someone who likes to be out and engaged and around people, uh, these last two years must've been very difficult. Um, you know, March, 2020, when pandemic and its restriction were announced, I felt unspeakable fear. Uh, it was new, unimaginable, and scary. I never expected that something like that would ever happen. Fear of becoming sick, fear that somebody of your family may die. Um, I watched in the past movies about outbreaks of pandemics but never in my boldest thoughts, I would imagine that something like that would become a reality and that it would hit entire world. Each news on the media was getting worse, causing bigger panic, 
It was strange, abnormal, odd, like now the war in Ukraine. Uh, biggest challenges and struggles during pandemic for me was becoming like is being locked down and my in my house with no possibility to see our children, grandchildren, relatives and friends. I'm a people's person, so I missed people, their smiles, conversations. There was no plan for a day, just trying to make it peacefully through every hour of the day. Days were long, nights were scary. The first two, three weeks, I felt like I were in a coma, slow motion picture. Even though it was so tragical, I think it was a good lesson for all of us. A lesson that taught us how much we need each other, that we need to spend more time with our families, relatives and friends. I think that most of us have reassessed what is really, really important for us. COVID and the isolation had also tremendous impact on our organization. We are a charitable non-for-profit organization which owns the headquarters, but also we have our monthly expenses with only source of income generated from events throughout the year. For almost two years, we were not able to hold any of them. So we faced a financial difficulty to sustain. On the other hand, a very important purpose of uh, the Alliance is collaboration with our members, working together, meeting with our clubs and committees for planning or, and organizing events. During lockdown, we all missed it a lot. It also slowed down our activities. People were afla afraid to leave their homes. Their social emotional impact was incredible. But on the other hand, now, we see how much our members want to meet, how much we need each other. Of course, we also missed May 3rd Parade, uh, which since 1891 proudly marched through Chicago downtown every year on first Saturday of May. Those two years of COVID as a substitute, we held virtual parades. They were successful with over 40,000 of viewers watching virtual parade via Facebook, but they were incomparable to the face-to-face -face events. We all missed the real life event a lot. Now we are getting ready for May 7th. We hope that state treasurer who was named last year by the Polish community friend of Polonia will march with us on May 7th. Well, Zia, you can, you can count on that. I am looking forward to it. I've suffered some of the same problems you described as someone who likes being out amongst people and I'm very much looking forward to participating in that parade. Uh, I didn't thank you didn't so think, much. I, I didn't think to ask you this, but you, you brought it up. The, uh, the pandemic was so hard for many of us. But I think something that's also really hard is we see what's going on in Ukraine today and how those families are suffering so much more than, uh, than we are. It puts things in perspective. And I know you're very active in your community. You're very empathetic. What are your organizations doing uh, to help the refugees in Ukraine? Because the country of Poland has been so very generous and accepting millions. I think we're approaching now 2 million uh, refugees flowing into Poland. What, uh, what can you tell us about what's going on there now? Uh, I think uh, the, the first thing that I would say is that indeed Poland has um, uh, gotten to, to the point where we have accepted that they were accepting over 2 million of people as of now. And uh, most of those people uh, were taken by the families, not necess necessarily by the government. Uh, people, uh, regular people take uh, families into their houses, they feed them, they take care of them. And I think uh, that's that's uh, the um, test that we have passed with uh, outstanding grade. Um, as uh, uh, the Alliance of Polish Clubs, we uh, got involved into uh, some of the actions. We have collected uh, money 
from our members, from our clubs, and through the um, national Polish National Congress, we have sent some money to Poland and Ukraine. We also co-sponsored last Sunday a big event that was held in um, in Lombard, uh, also uh, to collect some funds to support both Poland and Ukraine. Uh, Poland in the in the respect that the funds were uh, will be sent to the to the families uh, and to the government to to support the incoming uh, immigrants to Poland. Yeah. Well, thank you for that for that service. Uh, as we wrap up, any words of wisdom you want to share with individuals following in your footsteps, uh, women who want to be agents of change as you have been? What would you like to tell them? Um, I would start with education, and I want I want to say that education is the most satisfying and fulfilling job. It, but also extremely difficult, very stressful, and very often discouraging. It requires dedication and sacrifice. Um, if you're not ready for uh, those and you don't have those virtues, I wouldn't suggest that you even uh, choose that profession. Teaching to me is not a job. Teaching is service, and I always compare it with being a physician or a priest. Uh, it can be done only when you choose it based on this prophecy. In education, um, you are an agent of change, and change is very often difficult very and very hard accepted. When you introduce change, you always face resistance. Nobody wants to go off their comfort zone. Uh, you must be ready for that challenge. Don't be discouraged when others resist challenge. Change, make a plan, pick the goal and pursue. Uh, do it slowly, but consequently be transparent, open and flexible. Uh, don't wait for ap appreciation. It comes from within. And I would like to um, quote St. John Paul the Great. I plead you, I plead with you, never, ever give up on hope, never doubt, never tire and never become discouraged. Be not afraid. Great. Doctor, thank you very much. Uh, it was thoughtful, it was impactful, and I think that's why you were chosen as our Women's History Month Outstanding Achievement and Education Awardee. So, Dr. Lucia mirovska kopetz thank you and congratulations. Thank you very much, State Treasurer. As, as I said, I'm humble, I'm touched, and I never expected um, being awarded with this uh, wonderful award. Thank you so much, and thank you for the interview. You have a wonderful day. Thank you.